All right, welcome back. Um, this is the first of two videos about this example paper. Um, this one focuses just on format. Um, okay, just on format. So this essay follows uh, the format that I outlined in the essay one assignment sheet. Uh, exactly, I think. Um, I formatted it in landscape mode and I made a big margin so I could insert these text boxes um, that call out different things. Um, obviously, you don't need to do that. Um, so this here is how I want the title or how I want the your information to look. Um, here's the title. Make sure you title all of your essays. And um, importantly, here's the first header. So I want the headers just like this um, in bold. Um, and then with the space afterwards, um, I want your essays double spaced one inch margins um, they're probably going to be four to six pages if you do all the things and i i really did try to make it impossible for you to not do the things if you do the stuff you should at least be passing if not better um, so i'll talk more about that later when i um, get your rubric all set up so this right here this is the required part of your header just this word introduction everything after this colon this is all optional. Um, I recommend it because I think it's interesting and descriptive and it helps keeps you on track. Um, but anyway, got to have a header for the introduction. So I'm going to come back in the next video and talk about what the introduction does. For now, I want to point out this is the thesis at the end of the first paragraph. You must have this. It must be underlined. And you're obviously not going to have these little call out notes right here. You're not going to have a bracket that says observation plus opinion. You're not going to have a bracket that says significant significance, but you might have a semicolon um, and you're welcome to make that a period as well. The thesis statement needs to be at least two parts, um, if not two sentences. The first sentence um, explains what your essay is kind of working up to. Um, and the significance is what your commentary is going to be about. So um, you got to cover all that in your thesis, and I'll come, I'll come back to that later. And moving on, here's your first observation. This observation, um, same as the introduction, this is the only part that's required. Everything after the colon here is optional. Um, in this essay, this begins to talk about uh, the gender roles that we see at the start of the story. Um, so just notice the format here, and here is the topic sentence, and it is underlined. Um, I do that mostly for you, but also for me. Um, you should know exactly what your paragraph is going to be about, um, and everything should follow this topic sentence. I'm going to keep scrolling through here real quick. Here's your next observation. So this is the observation that sets up basically what the male antagonist in the character, uh, the male antagonist character is like. Um, so this paragraph describes how he's a wolf. Um, so again, observation um, needs to be here. Um, and then the rest of this is optional. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know, I'm not positive this is optional. This is a little more descriptive. Um, but basically what you want to communicate is how you see the gender roles working. Next observation paragraph, this is, this is where you move into what happens in the story. Um, like I said, this is, this is a lot of your story. Like, this may seem like a lot of writing thus far, but it's really not that much. The intro moves fast, description of how Red starts out is fast, the description of how the wolf starts out is fast. This section is where you begin to go through the story and explain what happens in the story. Again, notice the underlying topic sentence. This, this outlines what happens in the story and how those two sets of gender roles essentially interact. So you can have more than one paragraph in a section under a header. This section, the longest one about what happens in the story, this has lots of paragraphs. So we have one, two, three, Four, four, four decently sized paragraphs, and you'll notice I have some 
notes here on the structure and what these paragraphs are doing, and I'll talk through those in the next video. Um, here, we switch to commentary. So this is the significance part of the thesis. Down there in the commentary section is where I start to explain this. All right, so back down here, the conclusion of your essay, and it's important to think about a conclusion as where you come to a conclusion about what you think about the essay. Um, this can be several paragraphs too, so we have a few paragraphs here. Um, we have commentary here and then significance here. Um, I'm not positive that I put that in your assignment sheet, um, but that's a fine way to do it. Um, probably this is another commentary paragraph, but at any rate, um, the commentary explains how the gender roles evolve and work in this story. And then this section is essentially commentary too, but it's commentary on why that's important. So it steps out of the story a little bit and kind of looks at the world, um, or it looks at the system of the story. And I'll explain what I did with those moves here later. So this is not really a nine page paper. It's more like a, it's more like a four or five page paper. It's a lot longer because of how I formatted it. Um, so I know I rushed through that. Again, this one was just about format. Notice we have page numbers on every page except for the first page. Um, and then we have a works cited page. So again, I know I haven't gone over how to do a works cited page. I'm assuming that you either don't need me to go over that or you don't need my help to do that. Um, I linked somewhere, um, basically a website that will tell you everything you need to know. I'm gonna switch over to that now real quick um, so you can see it. Okay, so here you can see, I just Googled um, OWL, MLA. Um, OWL stands for Online Writing Lab. It's put out by Purdue University. They've been doing it forever. So just click. Um, and then check out on the left navigation here, um, MLA style. Read about whatever you need to read about here. Um, but we're looking at the MLA formatting and style guide. Um, basically what, what you're gonna be doing here um, is citing sources um, either that are books, right? And so this talks about how to cite a book um, or an electronic source. So just follow the format. Um, here are a couple of examples of uh, online sources um, and here are examples of books. Um, so for the most part, in the sample materials I've already given you, you basically have all the information you need to cite your sources. Um, and then the, other, the only other source you're gonna have to cite is the novel Annihilation. And you can just go to Amazon to get everything you need to cite that. Um, it's what I do all the time. It's what I did for this essay. So um, my point is don't trip on MLA citation, just do it. Um, if you get 90% there, I'm gonna be pretty happy. Um, the point is to, uh, to just do it and um, not make it look sloppy. Um, it's not a huge part of your grade, but uh, it's part of just doing the academic essay formatting that we're going to be doing in class. All right, so hopefully um, the formatting of this essay makes sense. It might seem like a lot, but I, I hope that not having to decide how to structure an essay actually gives you some freedom to, to do the things that you need to do pretty well. Like you shouldn't have to think about what you're doing um, or how to structure it. Rather, all you gotta think about is your content um, and doing the things the essay asks you to do. And, um, and I hope you find it to be a really logical format the way that I do. So um, this was the video on formatting the essay with the headers and all that stuff. And the next one is gonna be about um, kind of the critical thinking and the argument making behind all that. So um, thanks for listening as always. Hey, I got five minutes left. I'm going to quit right now.